Hi, I'm Dave Perry, the DT Advisor here at Cleeps. Welcome to our 3D printing tooltip. This short video has been put together to supplement the Cleeps guidance on the use of 3D printers, contained in the MRAT 088, Additive Manufacturing and 3D Printing, and Related Guidance. The points on this slide are taken from the MRAT. The first point highlights the need for operators of these machines to be considered competent. Unlike the more traditional machines found in design technology, 3D printers require the user to be confident in the practical handling of the machine, as well as working with 3D design software and slicing software. In many schools, the pupils develop their designs and send them to the teachers and technicians who are the people who actually operate the machine. If pupils are to use the machines themselves, they must be trained in both the operation and the safety of using the printer and be adequately supervised while they do so. Many prints will take multiple hours, and yet we advise that these machines should not be left unattended when they're working. There are printers with additional functionality, such as video camera links, thermal cutouts, and heat sensors that make the printer safer to use unattended and enable remote control. If this functionality is available, it may be possible to run the machine unattended. If the machine is to be left running without the operator nearby, the school must put systems in place, such as notifying site staff, so that they are aware that a piece of equipment is running out of school hours. Any hazardous materials, such as resins or flammable filaments, should be stored securely when they are not in use. Having the machine fully enclosed helps to control the main areas of risk, the moving parts and hot components. If the enclosure is filtered or extracted to outside, the fumes and particulates will also be controlled. Without an enclosure, the school would need to put in place other appropriate control measures, which may include forced ventilation or filtered extraction, as well as limiting access to the heated moving parts. All of this should be included in the record of the associated risk assessment. This slide summarizes the risk assessment process in a school. There should be a written record of how this is to be addressed. This record should be passed to the school management and regularly checked and where necessary, updated. We have lots of information about recording risk assessments on the website and we provide online and face-to-face -face training under the Courses tab on the website. The proper setup of the 3D printer is essential. The best way to start is to follow the manufacturer's guidelines for assembly and calibration. At Cleeps, we have a number of different printers. Each has its own way of working. These images show our Raise 3D Pro 3 machine which is fully enclosed and has built-in filtered extraction. Users need to be aware of the various elements that make up the printer and be aware that these are delicate, high-precision machines which can be easily damaged. On some machines, the user may be able to service and maintain the machine, including swapping the hot end or changing the extruder. Other machines are designed to limit the actions that can be taken by the user. However, all machines will benefit from regular maintenance and servicing. This could include checking the power supply and the cabling, checking the filament and the filament carrier, cleaning in and around the machine. A vacuum cleaner with a very small nozzle is very useful here. Checking the belts and pulleys and lubricating the bearings. Most printers use a silicon grease for lubrication, but you should check with your manufacturer. Although printers do not tend to be portable devices, they should be included in the school's portable appliance testing regime. Choosing the right filament is crucial for a successful print. 
it is also important to ensure that it is appropriate for the product being printed. Printing filaments and other materials must always match the printer manufacturer's specifications. This will avoid any potential problems such as blocked hot ends or other damage, or in extreme cases, fire. In the testing we have been involved in, PLA seems to be relatively safe to use in 3D printers, as it does not release any harmful fumes when it is heated. However, it does still release minute particles. Other commonly used filaments, such as ABS or PTFE, may release harmful fumes as well as the particulates. Where possible, unless your printer is enclosed and adequately extracted, like ours, you should avoid using filaments other than PLA. This is not always possible, as the final product may need to be manufactured from a specific material, but on these occasions, you should put controls in place, such as running the machine near an open window or making your own extraction unit so that you can control the harmful emissions. There are plans for these on the CLEEPS website. As a rule of thumb, one machine in a large room using PLA is probably fine, but multiple machines or one machine in a confined space will need ventilation. Any machine running filaments other than PLA will need ventilation and possibly extraction. For loading or charging filament, you must follow the manufacturer's instructions and only use filament that is approved for that machine and works within the temperature ranges of the machine. Unlike most other machines and processes in design technology, most of the processes of 3D printing do not actually involve the printer. Users start by generating a three-dimensional design for the item they want to print, which then needs to be saved in a format that the slicing software can manage. When slicing the design, there are many parameters to consider, including speed, temperature, and so on. After slicing, the design will need to be saved in a format that the printer can handle. The file needs to be transferred to the printer and the machine then set up to be able to print the sliced model. Prior to printing, the teacher or technician should check the sliced model to ensure that it will print. And this will include checking how long the print will take so that the time can be managed. Complex or large prints can take many hours. In the slicing software, there are usually changes that can be made to speed up the print, or the model can be scaled to make it smaller. But prior to starting the print, the teacher or technician needs to have in place the safety controls mentioned earlier, so that machines are not left running unattended without adequate safety measures. Most newer printers have a pause function, which can be used to pause the machine which then goes into a standby mode. The machine can be left unattended and the pause cancelled when it can be suitably supervised later or the next day. Once your printer is set up, the correct filament is chosen and loaded and the model is sliced and loaded onto the printer, it is time to print. When the print is complete, wait for the machine to stop completely and for the bed or material to cool, then carefully remove it from the bed without damaging the bed or the model. Our printer has a removable bed, which makes this operation easier. Depending on the material and the design, some post-processing may be required. This could include sanding, painting, or assembling multiple parts. There are MRATs and guides on the website for all of the processes that you may need to work through. These include the use of machines and hand tools, as well as how to manage the dusts or the fumes from using paints and glues. Some schools have digital light printers. These work slightly differently as they use a liquid resin, which is set using light, usually ultraviolet. In general terms, the safety requirements are the same as are the general considerations when using these machines. However, there are two significant differences. 
These use harmful resins, which will require safe practices to be put in place to ensure that the resin does not get on the skin or in the eyes of those working on the machine or those nearby. This means that users must be provided with suitable and effective PPE, including disposable nitrile gloves and suitable eye protection. The resin is set using ultraviolet light, which can be harmful. These machines are enclosed and have viewing panels which do not allow the harmful light to escape. The curing stations are also light tight to protect the user and those nearby. These machines must not be operated without the covers being properly closed. The fumes from these machines generated while printing or curing the resin can also be harmful and must be controlled. In our video describing how to carry out and record risk assessments, we explained the use of a spreadsheet to record the important control measures from the MRAT and how to use that information to inform the user and to help when teaching pupils. The text on this slide is taken from our record of our risk assessment for using the 3D printer in our facility. Thanks for watching. <laughs>